Hi everyone, so today we're going to be going over how to resize your art pieces for the AP Art and Design Portfolio exam. So to start off, we are going to be using a free online editor that everyone has access to, and it is called Pixlr. So to access it, you're just going to go to pixlr, P-I-X-L-R dot com. Then once you do that, you're going to see two options. You're going to see the advanced photo editor and then a more uh, watered down, simpler version for quick and easy design. Now, personally, I do prefer the advanced editor. Um, I'm you know, very familiar with uh, Adobe Photoshop and Pixlr E, the advanced option, just gives me a bit more options similar to what Photoshop offers. So I do prefer this, but again, if you would prefer something a little more basic, feel free to use uh, Pixlr X. But again, for this demo, I will be using the more advanced option so you guys have additional choices. Now, when you first get started, um, since I've used this before, I was uh, editing these two images. You can see these under latest projects. For yours, it'll most likely be empty, um, but it does give you a few recommended templates you could work with. Uh, later on, we're going to be talking about creating process slides. Um, and so I'll show you how these templates might come in handy for that later on. But to get started, we're going to begin with something a little more basic, which is just resizing your images for portfolio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so to begin, we're just going to click on this big open image button. Um, and I'm already at my folder that has the images I want to work with. Big shout out to Elizabeth O for giving me permission to use her files. Uh, she is a very skilled artist and designer. Um, so again, thank you for allowing me to use her artwork. So I've got uh, Elizabeth's art pieces here. We also have a folder for her process. We will be coming to that later. For now, we're just going to focus on our final image. So I'm gonna just preview that. Yep, that looks like our final artwork. We're gonna work with this one. I'll click open. Now, when I clicked open, it gave me this uh, pop-up here, this dialog box saying the image is very large. That is huge, right? So we need to resize it before we can start the edit in order to save on memory and minimize lag. Now, if this is the case for you, like maybe you're on a computer that's a little older or a little bit slower, then what you could do is you could actually go ahead and resize it here. So you could click on web and that's already going to make it a little bit smaller for you automatically. So it'll run a little bit faster. I am going to go full HD with it. This is still going to compress it a little bit, but not a lot. So I'll hit apply and here we have our new size. All right, so here we have our image to work with. Now, uh, I do want to crop it just a little bit. Uh, so if you, use scr if you scroll on your mouse, you can zoom in or out or you could click on the magnifying glass and use this to zoom in and out. So you can press 100%, fit, fill the screen. You have options there. Plus, zooms in, switch it to minus to zoom out. Okay, again, or you can just scroll. So our crop icon just looks like these two little overlapping 90 degree angles here. Um, so with that, I've got these handles off to the sides. So I can click and drag these handles to resize my artwork. So what I'm looking for here is I want it to be uh, symmetrical. Uh, it looked like there was just a little bit of extra space on this side versus this side. So if I just drag this in, I'm going to have better symmetry for this piece. Um, yeah, otherwise it looks, it looks really good. So I'm gonna drag that to where I want it, hit enter on your keyboard, and that will crop it. So I can see that in my history here. I just applied a quick uh, crop to this image. So then once we've cropped it, let's go ahead and uh, make some edits to this before we resize it. So this, it doesn't really need a lot of edits. This is already a really great looking image. Um, but let's say, let's say you did wanna do a little bit of editing. To do some edits to it, you can go up to adjustment. Now there's an auto adjust option, auto pop. Um, but we're gonna do it a little more manually just so we have more control over these options. So first we'll look at brightness or contrast. If your image, maybe when you took the photo, maybe there was like a shadow or maybe it was kind of a dark room and it just didn't come out as bright as you want it to be, you could use the slider to increase the brightness. Or maybe your flash went off and it was too bright. So you might wanna drag it down to reduce that glare, right? So this is how you adjust the brightness 
of your overall image. Then there's contrast. Contrast is lights versus darks. So if you increase this, dragging the slider to the right, you're increasing the contrast between those lights and darks. So the lights are getting lighter, the darks are getting darker. Or you can decrease that to um, desaturate it, right? Decrease the darks versus the lights. And if you click compare, you can actually hold this down to compare. So let me show you what that looks like. This is going to be crazy, but I want to show you the comparison. So yeah, if I click and hold, I can see uh, the before and the after. So I'm like, okay, that is too bright. So I'm going to decrease that, decrease this guy, and then let's compare. All right, so it's subtle, super subtle. Yeah, again, this one didn't really need too uh, many edits to it. So I'm actually going to click cancel. But if you did want to apply those, you just hit apply. Another really great adjustment to do is the temperature. So sometimes when you shoot an image, maybe you have a lamp in the room and the lamp is kind of warm tinted. So it's making your image look kind of yellow. You can cool that down by dragging this to the left to cool it down, right? Or maybe your, your whole photo came out kind of like blue tinted and that's not accurate. So you might want to warm it up, right? So you can use the slider to make the temperature, either the warmth or the coolness, uh, more or less. So again, just click apply if you did want to apply that. Um, so another thing that you might want to adjust is the hue and saturation. So hue, this one can be kind of dangerous, but this changes the coloring for your entire image um, that is changing our hue, which is our color. Saturation is how pigmented, how vibrant something is. If you want to desaturate it, it's going to be toned down, more muted, more gray. All right, so I'm going to click cancel on that. And then I want to show you one more option, which is our color balance. So maybe I want to manually adjust how how vibrant the red is, how vibrant the green is. I can use these sliders to either reduce the amount of red. So look, it's kind of taking away that purple. Reduce or increase the amount of greens in it, right? With blues. And you can do that for the highlight shadows and midtones. So that's a really helpful one too. Again, if your photo's colors did not come out accurately. Um, I know I said that that was going to be the last one, but there is one more thing I want to show. There's a lot of options, but I'm just showing you the ones that you would probably find the most useful for submitting. So then there's something called levels. So with levels, we can click and drag these sliders to either bring uh, in the amount of white in our image or the amount of black, the amount of darks. So this is another really great way to add contrast to your image. We can take um, these sliders and uh, bring them in to increase the amount of darks or bring the whites in to increase the amount of whites. All right, so I won't go into this in detail. It is a little more technical than that, but that's really um, the basics if you're just looking for a quick introduction to this. Now, let's say, for example, that part of our image was kind of washed out. What we might want to do in this case is we might actually want to darken parts of our image. So we could do that with our dodge and burn tools. So if we want to darken an area, you can change the size of your brush here, the size and the softness. Um, so if we want to, I'm going to make it a little bit larger. Uh, if we want to darken an area like here, it got a little bit washed out. I might increase the size of that and then just darken up this region to kind of hide where that, um, that big highlight was uh, cast from the flash of the camera. Um, so yeah, you can use this to kind of just darken up areas that, again, might have been like washed out from the photograph. Uh, you can also do the same with highlights. You know, maybe for whatever reason it came out very dark here, or it was actually light in the actual artwork. Oops, I messed up there. I clicked highlights. So I just pressed Command-Z. That's the shortcut to undo. You can also go edit, undo. Um, but I changed this to highlights, which is basically darkening the highlights. That's not what I wanted. Instead, I wanted to lighten it. So I switch to lighten, and then with lighten selected, I can go and brush in those uh, areas that were lighter in my original image. So what we're doing here is we're just trying to make our photograph uh, better represent our artwork, right? To show what it actually looked like, because again, sometimes our photograph can wash out parts of our image, highlights might affect it, shadows, the lighting, things like that. So this is helping our image uh, most accurately portray our artwork. So again, there's so many more tools that you could use, but those are probably the most useful. 
All right, so we've got our image, we cropped it, we did a few edits. Now let's go ahead and resize this for portfolio. To resize it, we're going to come right up here to image, image size. All right, now this is important stuff here. So first off, we'll want to adjust the width or the height. Now make sure constrained proportions is on. By default, it should be turned on, but just double check. Make sure it's not off, it needs to be on because this will help uh, ensure that your image isn't skewed or stretched, uh, stretched disproportionately, right? We need to make sure that everything is scaled proportionately, nice and even. That way our artwork doesn't look squished or messed up. Um, so constraint proportion should be on and we will go ahead and leave smoothing on as well. Now, what we need to do is we need to take a look at the maximum size that College Board uh, says our images can be. So College Board says our maximum size for either a portrait or landscape image is 780 by 530. 780 by 530 is the maximum size. All right, so what we're gonna do is since it's by 530 and my width is the most uh, narrow part of my artwork since it's portrait, I'm going to go and make the width 530. All right, so once I've done that, the height went ahead and changed to 714. Since that's below 780, we are good. This is below the maximum size. So this is perfect, right? And it gives us the max size, you know, because technically I guess we could have gone in and said 300, but we want this to be as large as College Board will allow us to uh, make it. That's just going to help it to uh, display a little nicer, a little higher uh, quality. So again, we're going with 530, and that automatically changed the height for us to 714. And of course, this is going to vary depending on your image. But again, the key takeaway is the maximum size is 780 by 530. If you're working with a square image, then this needs to be 642 by 642. Okay, so I'm going to hit apply. And then there we have our resized image. All right, so with that, we are ready to go ahead and save it. So if we go File, Save, then we can go ahead and we wanna make sure we choose JPEG, right? For College Board, it has to be JPEG. We wanna make it the max quality, right? So as high of quality as possible. Um, now College Board does have a three megabyte max, right? So this is 645 kilobytes, so definitely under three megabytes. All right, so our quality is high, image width is uh, correct spec, so we can go ahead and click download. All right, that's going to go ahead and download and I can move this into my folder. All right, so I went ahead and just moved that file from my downloads to my final folder here. Uh, so if I click and preview that, there is my image. So this is what College Board would be looking at. Um, so this meets all of their requirements. Now, this is a really beautiful image. I might want to show off certain parts of this image, right? I might want to incorporate a few detail photos to really show off the texture. I'm going to show you how to do that next. All right, so here we have the image we just worked with. Now, we had just cropped that image, right? So this image has already been cropped down. When we create our close-up, I don't want to work with a scaled down image. I want to work with that high res original. So what I'm going to do is I am actually going to edit undo. All right. So now we're back at that large sized image, right? That original that was 1418 by 1911. Now I could save this, right? To have a new edited image to work with, or I could just keep um, working directly with this. So I want to make that close up image. So again, I'm with my high res original. I'm going to go back up to crop but this time I'm going to choose a specific size. So I want a square close up. Now the max size for a square with College Board is 642 by 642. So I'm going to choose size, wait, right? So our constraint is size 642 by 642. All right, so that gives me a square. Now I want that close up just to be a part of this image though. So I'm going to resize this box. I kind of like how the eye lines up with this rule of thirds and I really want to show the texture and detail and uh, shading here with the values. 
Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and choose where I want that close-up to be. That looks good. It's 640 by 642. I'll hit apply and there we have it. Now this close-up is really showing off that beautiful texture and layering there. So we would do the same thing. We'd go file, save, make sure it's JPEG. We want 100% quality, high, right, for the quality. And then you can name this uh, close-up, right? So portrait purple close-up, just something so you can tell it apart and click download. Now I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to move this into my uh, final folder. All right, so here I am. Uh, again, I made a final folder for these final resized ones for College Board. So now you can see I've got that uh, portrait and then I have my close-up image. So I've got two images, two potential slides that are resized and ready for College Board. So next, we're going to talk about how to set up a process slide, a process image. So we want to make sure that we're showing our creative process and uh, an easy way to do that is to include a process slide. That's a really great way to show off revisions that you've made to the piece, uh, examples of synthesis, your practice, and basically how your piece has evolved from start to finish. So let's go ahead and make that process image. Uh, I'm just going to click on home to go back to my home page here and let's go ahead and create new. I'm going to show you uh, afterward how to use these templates if you'd prefer. Um, but to kick things off, we're going to go ahead to, again, create new. All right, with create new, I'm just going to call this, I've been calling it purple portrait, so I'll call it purple portrait process, underscore process, little tongue twister there, purple portrait process. All right, so then we are going to max out the size. Again, um, college board requirement here is 780 by 530. Okay, so we want ours to be landscape because it's like a presentation. So we'll go 780 by 530. All right, that looks good. We have the option to add in a background. By default, it is a plain white background, but it's kind of personal preference. Some students really like the contrast of a very dark background, you know, or even maybe it's like a shade of gray or a color. It's really up to you. Uh, I will go ahead and work with the default of white though here. But again, if you did want to change it, you just click on this drop down and that's where you can choose the color background that you want. But again, I'm just working with white. So clicking on white and we are good to go. 780, 530, we named it. Let's do this. All right. So now we have our process image uh, or a start at least for our process image. So let's go ahead and add to this. We are going to go over to our layers. So the way layers work is it's basically like a stack of papers on top of one another. So the top layer is going to be on top of everything else. And we're gonna create a new layer with a new image. So I'm gonna hover over this plus and then click on image. And from there, we'll go ahead and navigate to the image we want to add. So in Elizabeth's folder, I do have uh, her process that she started. Um, so we've got notes that she wrote here on abstract art and acrylic painting. You know, this definitely shows a great, great practice and experimentation through this imagery. Um, so we definitely want this in here, uh, a midway point. So let's go ahead and start out with this one. This is a really, really beautiful visual example. So we're going to place that in. I'm going to zoom out and then you can click on this little handle up here to rotate the image. Okay, if we hold shift, it'll kind of snap it. So that makes it easy for us to get it perfectly horizontal. Otherwise, if you don't hold shift, it's really tough to get it accurate. So I'm holding shift and then we'll go ahead and scale it in. And then again, we're going to do the same thing. Plus click on image and let's add in that text, those notes. And we can always revise this later. Now, this might be a little bit difficult to read. So it also has a lot of extra space down at the bottom that I don't really want in there. So what we're going to do here is we are going to crop this and adjust. Uh, we're going to adjust the levels of it, right? The lights versus the darks here. So I'm going to, you can either hit command Z or I'll just hit delete on my keyboard. And then I'm going to go uh, back to home. So we've still got this open. I can actually go ahead and close out this previous one. We're gonna go back to open and let's go ahead and open up that process image with our text. All right, now that we have this open, we can go ahead and crop this. So I'm gonna crop it so we just have 
this at the bottom. It is still difficult to read uh, with the quality, so you know, Elizabeth might want to go back through and re potentially retake this image. Um, or, you know, I think I actually might have taken a screenshot from her workbook, which automatically reduces the quality. So again, just make sure that you guys are using your original images. Um, or, if all else fails, we could actually manually type out all of this. But I really like her note taking here. So we'll just work with this for now, but again, key takeaway is make sure that your original image is as high quality as possible. Again, I think this was um, not an issue that Elizabeth did, I think it was just me taking a screenshot from her, her workbook. But anyways, image, uh, I'm sorry, adjustments, adjustments, and then we're going to come up here to levels. And you see this? This shows that all of our work is kind of this mid-tone gray. So I want to instead increase the darkness and then really bring up the whites there. All right. Now that text is looking nice and sharp. And then what used to be that kind of mid-tone gray here is now white. So that really helps with the legibility here. It also looks a little bit yellow tinted. So what I'm actually going to do is... Uh, kind of like what we talked about before with temperature and tint. I'm going to just cool down this process a little bit to get rid of that yellow. All right, that's looking good. Then we're going to save this. File, save. Uh, we'll call this process notes. High quality. Download. And now what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and I'm going to move that again to my process folder. And then we'll go ahead and import it. Okay, I moved this into my process folder, so I'm going to, I can actually switch between these two tabs right up here if I wanted to. So I'm going to go back to our main process here, and then we're going to click on that plus, add the image, and oh, there are my notes loading in. All right, so now I have this. Cool. Now, I, so originally I was like, yeah, I wanted this to fill up the page, but now I'm thinking, you know, maybe we scale it down. A little bit instead we also might want to edit this separately again just to brighten up the uh, lights versus dark the image does look like it came out a little little dark little yellow tinted um, but anyways we'll work with this for now uh, as is we also might want to consider breaking this up into two pages so Elizabeth might want to go and take like one photo just of this page one photo just of this page and one just of this uh, and then we can kind of collage that um, but again for demonstration purposes this will work just fine we could actually resize our um, our image here so let's go ahead and I'm gonna reset it go back to our selection tool and I'm going to I'm holding shift just like both of these scaling down all right and then yeah maybe I want this here and maybe I want this to have a white box around it to create that white box I can go down here to shapes I can draw out a box and then again like I mentioned before these are layers so it's each thing is stacked on top of each other so I want this to be on top, so I'm going to move that white shape behind it to have that little border. Alright, and then again I might want to crop this. So what I would do is go to my crop tool. We're still at 780 width, which is good, and maybe we scale that up. We can have no border if we want. And then this would be our process image, so again showing off our notes along with this final slide. So then we would do the same thing, file, save as, and save this as our high resolution image. And this would be a really great example of process. We could even make these two slides if we wanted to, but um, ideally our slide wouldn't just be entirely text. It is uh, typically better to show than tell. You can uh, tell as long as we're also pairing it with those visuals. Um, because basically the area that's really your opportunity to write about your work is going to be the written area under ideas, under your sustained investigation, on, under your written evidence, things like that. Um, so again, a little text is okay though, we just don't want it to be the main part of our process image. We don't want it to be just this. Not ideal. Um, but this looks really good having everything together.
All right, so we're going to file save and do the same thing. We want it high, 100% quality. This looks good. And we will go ahead and download that. And then we will save that to our, um, to our folder. All right, so now we have our final artwork. We have one with a close up and then we've got a process image. So cool, we have three potential slides uh, for our sustained investigation. Now, of course, we could always combine some of these, like we could have the close up as a part of our process. Uh, it's really up to you. You can get creative depending on how much work you have to work with. All right, now let's go back to Pixlr. I'm going to go ahead and click on home. Now, I mentioned before that we would talk about templates. Uh, the only issue with templates and Pixlr is they're not free, right? They are, uh, they're really great and easy to use, but again, they require premium. So you are welcome to use these, but I am going to show you another option for templates that is free. Okay, so for some great free options, I do recommend Canva. So I'm just here on canva.com. I am on the free option. Um, and Canva has a ton of really great free templates that you could use. So you could search for collage, or if you scroll down, I'm on the homepage and then scroll down, you should find uh, one called collages or like photo collages, I think it's called. Here it is. All right, so photo collages are really what we would want to work with here. So there's tons of options, but I'm gonna go ahead and just pick this one to start with. And then what we would do is we would go through and um, start to modify this. So if, for example, we want to replace this image, we would go up to our photos. Well, first you would upload your photos. So we'd go to uploads and then from here we'd upload our imagery. So I'm picking to upload from a device. I'm going into process and let's go ahead and get these updated. I'm just holding shift to select all of them and then here they come. So then I can just click and drag to have these added. So now I've got my notes here. Maybe I want it a little larger, you know, so I could hold shift and start to resize these. But this is a really great way to go and start to uh, build your presentation for process. Um, so you can add a different name here or you can add a different image. We could just click and drag if we wanted to. Um, yeah, so again, it's a really, really great option to quickly add in your imagery. Now, um, to rotate it, you can just click on that little, uh, that little icon, let me undo, this little icon here that looks like it's rotating or spinning, and then we could spin it around and get it kind of where we want it. So I definitely recommend Canva as a awesome option for building out your process presentations. So yeah, you can really spend some time here uh, adjusting stuff. I do recommend you edit your images first in um, in Pixlr before bringing them into here. It will save you um, quite a bit of trouble because like this one, for example, you know, we want to crop it a little bit, but it still has like the yellow tint and stuff. So again, editing first will save you a lot of work. Then once you have it done, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and download it. So click on download. You're going to choose your JPEG. Now for the JPEG, we don't have the option to change the size unless you pay, but that's okay because again, we can just download this and then we can crop it and resize it back in Pixlr just like we did previously. All right, so I'm going back into Pixlr. We're going to go ahead and open up that image that we just downloaded from Canva. And with this open, we're going to do the same thing with resizing. So image, image size, we want to max out uh, that size. I think I'm actually gonna crop off these edges first though, um, since I had some extra space there. All right, there we go. So we've got it cropped and then again, image, image size and uh, college board again, request maximum of 780 by 530. So let's go ahead and make this 780. That's too big. So we're actually going to make this 530. Perfect. So now we are within that minimum. All right, hit apply. And then we're going to go ahead and save this. All right, I'm calling it purple portrait process slide. Hitting download. We'll move it into our final folder. All right, so now in our final folder, we have our final art. 
we have that close up and then here's the two process slides that we created uh, definitely don't upload both pick one or the other so it's not redundant um, but there we have at least three slides for our SI. Uh, so I know this was a long video, but I hope it had a lot of really great information for you guys and was easy enough to follow. If you do have any questions at all or need any assistance, please let me know. I'm happy to help. And good luck on your AP portfolios.